We will begin this meeting of the Syracuse Planning Commission and momentarily we'll begin our public hearings for this evening. But before we do that, we have one item of housekeeping business to take care of, namely the minutes from our last. Oh, I can't hear you. Is that better? No. Is it on? <laughs> no. Good evening. Okay, thank you. Thanks for calling that to our attention. We'll begin this meeting of the Planning Commission momentarily and with it our schedule of public hearings for this evening. But before we do that, we will take action on the minutes from our last meeting, uh, January the 28th. Is there a motion on those minutes, please? Move to approve the minutes of January 28th, 2019. Second. Discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? Our minutes are approved. We have a very long schedule of public hearings for this evening. And just by way of um, context for those who may not be familiar with the process, as each application is announced, we will ask the applicant or their representative to come forward to the podium to my left provide their name and address for the record as well as a brief summary of the project and following any questions from the Commission members we will invite members of the public who wish to speak in favor of the application to do so and likewise we will invite members of the public who wish to speak in opposition to the application to do that as well where there are comments made in opposition we will encourage the applicant to return uh, to address those comments made in opposition Again, we have a very long series of public hearings this evening, so uh, it would be appreciated to have comments concise and focused on the application at hand. So with that, we will get underway. Heather, could you announce our first uh, application this evening? Yes, good evening, Commission members. Mr. Kulik, the first public hearing is PR 1835. This is a continuation from December 10th of 2018. This is a project site review for new construction, and this is to construct an addition onto an existing building. This is at 214 West Water Street. Syracuse Soma Project LLC is the owner and applicant, and the project lies within a central business district, office and service zoning district. And um, if you recall, this is a type one action. It's uh, the property is listed on the National Register, and you have already conducted the coordinated review, declared yourself lead agency um, previously. So um, I just wanted to clarify that in case you forgot. <laughs> Uh, good evening, James Trasher, CHA, here representing uh, Syracuse Soma Project LLC, who is the applicant and owner of the proposed uh, property and uh, is a developer of the proposed addition. Um, it's the block that is South Clinton, Erie Boulevard, Westwater, South Franklin, uh, the uh, home of the former Amos building with the addition that we put on uh, a few years ago uh, overlooking Clinton Square and we're as we were here previously and we gave an overview of the project we're looking to do a nine-story addition um, where the existing uh, parking lot uh, exists attaching to the stairwell of the Amos building um, on the first level along Erie Boulevard we would have an entrance into a mechanical uh, parking system where we would have a lift system to provide parking for the tenants of the building uh, we would have storefronts um, along the Water Street side um, for art displays, different things in there, um, working from our existing building uh, down uh, to the corner where we would have uh, two retail spaces with access out to uh, South Franklin. Floors uh, two through eight would be um, uh, apartments, either one or two bedroom apartments. Um, on the project. We were previously here and we've been to multiple meetings over the past couple of years with the Landmark Preservation Board uh, to go through our proposed uh, addition. Um, the last Landmark Preser uh, at, the la at the last Landmark Preservation Board meeting, uh, they recommended this project uh, to move on to the Planning Commission. 
Uh, we appreciate there was a lot of help from the zoning office and um, members of the planning uh, commission to provide some insight and thoughts into what would make this um, flow with the existing buildings and character uh, in the area. So uh, we have elevations that are shown. So you can see this is a perspective along South Water um, addition that was constructed several years ago, ex existing building and proposed uh, new nine story tower. On the, I'll use the Clinton Street side, the upper floors would have um, uh, patios that could overlook the square, other end of the building, uh, those were removed. We tried to take some of the contacts and work vertically and horizontally across and changing the colors and datum lines that were requested um, by different folks uh, through the process. Here we just give the north, south, east and west elevations of the building. Um, we have some vertical relief on both ends of the buildings. and. In, in all this, there's the ins and outs of the building when you're looking at a color elevation and, you know, 2D, um, it doesn't show it as well. Um, but we're here to uh, hopefully receive your approval on this project. Uh, we do have an encroachment that is a portion of this project on uh, the Erie Boulevard side um, just to keep the building line with the existing, it's like a six inch encroachment that's consistent existing building the addition we constructed a couple of years ago so we keep the same building line this we have pulled everything back within uh, the property line which was requested in, in previous iterations um, and then we're opening up some area here for green space um, to match the park that's across the street so be more than happy to answer any questions go through any comments for those uh, updates. Let's pause and see if there's some questions from the commission members. I just want to say thank you for taking into account some of the recommendations that we made before in terms of modifying the design. Oh, and we appreciate your comments and they were very helpful through the process and taking time to have you know, calls with the zoning administrator to help push this thing along. Okay, then no questions. Thank you very much. Are there individuals who would like to speak in favor of this application? If so, please come to the podium. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to the application, please come forward. No additional speakers this evening. We can close this hearing. Thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs> Next public hearing is R1902. This is a resubdivision, and this is a continuation from the last meeting, January 28th. And this is to combine uh, 18 properties into one new lot at uh, 206, 208, 210, 212, 216, 218, 222, and 224 Ashworth Place, and 1213, 1215, 1219, 1221. 1225 to 1227, 1231, 1237, 1301, 1311, 1317, and 1323 East Genesee Street. Northside Genesee Associates, LLC, is the owner and applicant. And these properties lie within two different zoning districts, residential class B and residential class C. The two companion pieces to this resubdivision are the next two on the agenda. Um, I, I will announce those because it's a, a comprehensive project. Um, it's PR 1903, and this is also a continuation from January 28th. This is the project site review for demolition and new construction, and this is to construct uh, an apartment building at 206, 216, 218, and 222 Ashworth Place, and 1213, 1215, 1219 to 1221, 1225 to 1227, 1231, 1237, 1301, 1311, 1317, and 1323 East Genesee Street. Northside Genesee Associates LLC is the owner and the applicant, and all of these properties lie within a residential class B zoning district. This review is applicable and appropriate for those in that zoning district. The next case, next public hearing, SP 1906, also a continuation from January 28th, is a special permit for an apartment building. This is at 208, 210, 212, 224 Ashworth Place, 
Northside Genesee Associates LLC is the owner and the applicant. And these properties lie within the residential class C zoning district. And I think as we explained this before, the different zoning districts have different rules, different procedures, and different requirements within them. And that is why the reason for these different reviews. Members of the commission, Kevin McAuliffe, Barkley Damon, 125 East Jefferson Street, Syracuse. Um, this evening, I'd respectfully request that the hearing be uh, remain open until the next meeting. CIDA has not yet acted. We'd like to be able to respond to the seeker findings once they are completed. Um, and, and also, in addition, we've taken to heart the comments and considerations that you put forth at the last meeting, and also those mentioned by the Zoning Board of Appeals last Thursday and are exploring modifications to the plan, much like the last applicant at the microphone did, um, and we hope to be able to have those ready for you at the next meeting. So if you have any questions this time, I'd be glad to entertain them. Otherwise, I will move your agenda along quickly with those three. Are there questions, first of all? No, but we'll no. say thank you. And, and we appreciate the um, uh, taking into account the comments from last time. I think it's entirely appropriate. We maintain the hearing open, and I think the only other uh, appropriate step at this stage for these three hearings tonight would be to ask if anyone wishes to speak since they were advertised, um, even though these projects may well change in some respect. Understood. Uh, by the time we reconvene here again. So um, we'll defer to the public, see if there are individuals who wish to speak, and then we'll maintain the hearing open and likely see you at our next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. So with that summary and uh, that status report on these three applications, is there anyone who wishes to speak on any one of these three related applications? If so, please come forward. Good evening. Virginia Fellman, 124 Circle Road. I'm actually here to submit a letter written by my husband, John Fellman, who's a professional engineer, professor emeritus from SUNY ESF. It's in regard to the uh, build out of private property on Genesee Street. And I, for brevity, I'll just read the conclusion. There is a clear need for continual comprehensive monitoring and analysis of our development approval processes, including articulated coordination between the mayor, the city council, zoning board, planning commission, CIDA, and neighborhood groups. Um, the, uh, I strongly urge you to consider a brief moratorium on approvals of these private projects so that a needed development monitoring and analysis process can be studied and put in place. Thank you so much. Thank you very much as well. And we will add this to the record. Thank you. Hi, my name is Pat Bode. I live at 130 Buckingham Ave. I am a resident of the university area and have lived in Syracuse my entire life. At the present time, we have 1,700 vacant buildings and an excess of 1,900 family units. On the east side, recently, there have been several large apartment buildings built over a very short period of time. Now the current proposed building would be very close to residential homes. Has data already been collected to determine the impact the newly built apartment buildings have had on the city's infrastructure, response time on the fire department, and the impact it's had on the neighborhoods. Do we know the impact of adding another 520 plus beds on what was mentioned above? The future of our city depends on making decisions that create jobs, increase our tax base, and enhance our neighborhoods, as well as the business corridors. At this time, I'm requesting a moratorium be put in place until an independent needs market needs assessment is completed. Decisions can then be data driven. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We will uh, also add that uh, statement to the record as well. Are there other individuals who wish to speak in opposition to this, any one of these three applications? So no additional speakers this evening. 
As indicated, we will hold this hearing, three hearings open um, for our next meeting in uh, approximately three weeks. Um, I would just clarify, you had just indicated anyone speaking against. Um, if anyone is here to speak in favor, they're also welcome to come to the podium. Oh, my goodness. Um, <laughs> you just assumed there'd be nothing but opposition. My... No, he opened it up and said, is anyone here to speak in general? And I just wanted to make sure if anyone had a different... Uh, Absolutely. Something else to say, that they are also welcome. So let me reiterate, if anyone would like to speak in favor of any one of the three related applications this evening, please come forward to do so. And there doesn't appear to be any additional speakers of any kind. So again, we will hold all three hearings open um, and await the determination from CIDA. Our next application, please. Our next public hearing is SP 1903. This is a special permit for a restaurant at 429 to 431 Ulster Street. Home Headquarters Incorporated is the owner. And Recess Coffee and Kitchen LLC is the applicant. And this property lies within a business class A zoning district. Uh, my name is Jason Evans at 101 Arlington Avenue. I'm here on behalf of my wife, actually, the architect. I'm also an architect. Um, here are the owners, Adam and Jesse of, of Recess. Um, so this project is situated in the, the middle of Tipperary Hill, which for the life of me, I can't quite figure out why it has not yet, however, and still survives without a coffee shop in their neighborhood. Um, and so Adam and Jesse are proposing to bring Recess Coffee to the middle of the neighborhood in partnership with Home Headquarters, who own the building, they recently purchased the building and are undergoing some major upgrades um, in terms of the exterior of the building and restoring a lot of the site from its paved over estate to a uh, more neighborhood friendly uh, series, of, a bit of grass and sidewalks and so on. Um, so Recess Coffee itself would be located in the corner storefront first floor of the property. They'd be doing some uh, minor upgrades to the facade of the building, some new wood siding and some signage. I believe that you have the documents in front of you. Um, and kind of in building out the interior space into the to the coffee shop cafe. Um, previously, this was a, ca a, a cafe of some sort, so it's very similar in use. Um, it has a series of waivers already in place for parking and signage, and so these are just, we're just requesting some minor modifications to those waivers um, because it will be no parking on site, assuming it's a nice walkable neighborhood, easily access it on foot and or via off street or on street. I guess with that, we'll just open up to questions. Uh, here and Adam from Recess, if you have any questions about the project, we can explain more thoroughly. One quick one. What, what percentage of the building will the coffee entity occupy, roughly? Roughly, I think it's about a third of the ground floor, a quarter to a third. Thank you. Questions? Yeah, about the signage, unless anyone else ready? OK. Um, you received comments back from the office, the zoning office, about the signage. And you could just describe to us the, what your need would be if, if you went beyond two signs, why you'd need three, and why the square footage you need. Sure. Um, we, the, the project itself, the, site, or the storefront itself is on a corner. So we wanted to have a sign facing both streets. There's a larger sign facing Ulster and a smaller sign facing right on the corner of the building. And there are actually three entrances into the storefront space and so we wanted to put an additional third sign just small couple square feet above on the awning above the main entrance just to signify that that is the primary entrance as opposed to the other two secondary more egress type entrances and then um, the square footage wise I think we're if I recall off the top of my head I think it, uh, the, the linear frontage allows for about 170 square feet and so we're well below that at like 30 square feet more or less the awning sign a, a rigid feature, or is it, you can't tell from the drawing? It would it'd be a semi-permanent rigid feature attached to the building, yeah. It's not backlit, or, OK. Thank you. Further questions? Thank you very much. Are there individuals who would like to speak in favor of this application? If so, please come to the podium. Uh, 
Good evening. My name is David William. I live at 110 Milton Ave. Uh, I'm three ho houses down from the proposed project. I'm also a senior board member of the Tipperary Hill Neighborhood Association. Um, Janice McKenna, our president, would normally come. She could not come tonight, so she asked me to come. Uh, we are overwhelmingly in favor of this project. I can tell you there was a cafe in the same location about five years ago, Tip Hill Cafe, so they're just redoing what has already been done in the building. Um, the building needs some work. They're going to do the work to it through our Facebook page and online uh, social media. We've received a lot of feedback on the board in favor of the projects, and the neighborhood is overwhelming on board with this. As someone that lives three houses away from the project, it, it, there's no parking issues there, so we'll be good. So we're in favor of it. Thank you. Thank you. Other individuals who wish to speak in favor of the application, please come forward. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to the application, please come forward. We'll declare the hearing closed and move to our next hearing. Next public hearing is SP 1904. This is a special permit for light duty motor vehicle repair at 1200 Park Street. Mohammed Huck is the owner and applicant, and it lies within a business class A zoning district. Good evening, Nicole Macris from Serial Law Offices, 407 South Warren Street, 5th floor, Syracuse, New York. And I'm here on behalf of Mr. Hawk. Um, it's my impression that we received comments from the office, and uh, those two of which I believe have been resolved, those two being the signage. Um, two, there are two signs that remain on the structure. One is uh, labeled Hawk Auto Repair, which does not exceed the 40 square feet. And the second um, was deemed regulatory for the New York State DMV. And I believe that that was agreed upon. Um, the second would be the sidewalks. In f the photos that were submitted, uh, numbers 1290, 1304, 1305, and 1308, um, you can see that sidewalks were, in fact, um, put in from um, Mr. Hawk. Um, the third issue is the right-of-way, um, which uh, is presented on one of the photos where the cars were originally um, lined up. Those cars have been removed, um, and also Mr. Hawk has agreed to put a bollard and chain fence along his property line there so as to prevent cars from from being parked there um, and also miscellaneous vehicles coming from the street that would be um, prevented by the sidewalk already being there right. and that's all I have for you. you're welcome are there any questions that I can I have an, a question of staff. Um, I didn't see any comments from the city transportation planner in here in the little chart. Usually has stuff to say. Or did they just get recorded someplace else? He just usually comments about curb cuts and things of that nature, so. Um, yes, it says pending. Um, we can get those comments and um, hmm. Can we request an adjournment until those comments are received in case there is a, an issue with that? That's an option for the commission, yes. Um, um, and if we've determined that those comments from the planner, transportation planner are not in here, we could renew the request for comments, correct? 
You could, and if you feel that you want to see those comments before you act, um, you can certainly do that, uh, or you can act condition uh, with a condition that the um, based on what you expect those comments to say. Okay. So that there are two options. A couple of options here. Yeah. Okay. But if the applicant That's wishes to request an adjournment, she certainly can as well. So, and it. Is an adjournment the same thing as? A holding, oh. yes. Okay, that's it. Just to make sure we're the same language. <laughs> I, I don't know about my colleagues. I would like to have Neil's comments. Yes. So the transportation planner's comments. Sorry. Yes, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there individuals who would like to speak in favor of this application? If so, please come to the podium. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to the application, please come forward and provide your comments. So no additional speakers. As noted, we will uh, seek the comments, if any, from the transportation planner, and we will hold the hearing open um, while we're waiting for those comments. And now we'll move to our next hearing for this evening. The next public hearing is SP 1905. This is also a special permit. This is for a restaurant at 712 to 714 East Fayette Street, 712 to 14 East Fayette Street Group LLC is the owner and Toasty Life LLC is the applicant and this property lies within a business class A zoning district. Bon Essie with Toasty Life, how are you? Thank you. Could, could, would you yep. just speak up the microphone? Uh, yeah. Grab and Go Cafe, an existing apartment building, 712 East Fayette. Um, there was a cafe originally there when they opened um, for a short time. Cafe Kubal was there. And uh, I hope to do a similar things, selling coffee and grab and go sandwiches, salads, vegan, gluten free items, and some local grocery items for the apartment buildings in the area. Can you just state your name again? I'm sure. sorry. Yvonne Essie. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we would ask you to address this evening mm -hmm. would be the waivers that are required for the application. There are several of those. Sure. Uh, I hope you've seen them yes, in advance. The so if you could just kind of run through them. Yep, the, the parking waivers that came with the building, uh, the building owners have received parking waivers from the, the council for those. Um, there is off-street parking for myself um, and as well as the, the building owners at 701 East Fayette have parking. Um, we do have alternate street parking and I am a grab-and-go cafe, so there really is, my, my core base is gonna be the, the neighbors in the area. Um, some delivery to the business offices downtown so I don't believe parking should be an issue for me down there and exo taco just opened up across the street um, so they're evening and I'm morning Your hours, are hours are going to be seven to four okay. and then on the weekends eight to two probably closing Mondays we're gonna test out you know closing at least one day I need one day off a week <laughs> Most people do yeah. <laughs> And could you also talk about the signage that you're proposing? The signage, uh, if you have the pictures there of the front of the building, I can go over that with you. There's literally going to be just a small window sign um, inside the building. It's a cling decal. There's nothing that's going to be on the building exterior. Um, it's above the door frame. It's a six by two window decal on the inside of the building. and a basic op uh, on and off open sign. So nothing obstructing, the, the building's brand new, beautiful, and doesn't really need much signage. Thank you, other questions for the applicant? Okay. okay, thank you very much. Thank you. We'll pause and ask if there are individuals who wish to speak in favor of this application, and if so, come forward to do to do just that. Good evening, Chris Geiger, 120 Ocean Avenue, Amityville, New York. Uh, I am the managing member and operator of this building. Um, we're very excited to have Miss Essie open what's hopefully a very successful business there. Um, 
Our family operates the Mom's Diner on Westcott. I'm sure some of you are familiar with that. and It's an institution on Westcott, at least for me it is. Um, and we're very excited to have this, uh, this, this business in our building, especially to complement XO across the street, which is quickly becoming a, a cool brunch spot on the weekends and a luncheon. And, and obviously, it's very active there at dinner. So I think it's going to be a great, great addition to the neighborhood. And hope you guys approve it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Just a quick clarification, because of your interest in the project, your personal interest, your comments should be considered as part of the presentation rather than as from members of the public, just to clarify for the Okay, record. understood. And we still appreciate the comments. Thank you. And I will also renew the call for anyone who wishes to speak in favor of this application to come forward now to do so. And the opportunity for those who wish to speak in opposition to the application to come forward now and do that. So no additional speakers, and we'll declare this hearing closed and move to our next hearing. The next 12 public hearings may look like a lot. Um, Syracuse University has uh, a desire to take all of their holdings and change the zoning from the existing to a plans institutional district, which under the zoning rules and regulations, um, they are uh, permitted to request that. And you'll see that each change of zone has a PID district plan, which is a requirement. Um, that's the, the nature of uh, plan institutional districts, and that's what makes them unique. Um, because there is a plan that accompanies a zone change. So each one has two together. Um, SU is here to prepare to uh, present each one, but um, I just want to let you know that even though there's 12, there's technically uh, really only six presentations um, this evening, but you still have to vote on them separately. So I will <laughs> announce the first set. <laughs> so Z2807 is a change of zone from residential class B and business class A to plan institutional district. This is at 401 Van Buren Street and Syracuse University is the petitioner. And Z2813 is the district plan that accompanies the zone change. So it's a PID district plan. And this is to establish sub-district number 10 to the overall SUPID at 401 Van Buren Street. Syracuse University is the petitioner and uh, owner of the property and it's residential class B and business class A. So I think if we take these in groups like that, it would uh, uh, be a little more, um, add some clarity and be efficient. So. Heather, I have a generic question. With each of these, Specifically with the hearings related to the district plan. Yes. There's a chart that will say subdistrict 10 has a series of categories and then existing, proposed, and required. Mm -hmm. Can you just explain which each of those categories ex existing is the existing conditions? So, for example, existing structural coverage 19%. Yes. So then proposed is. Should be the same. It's 50%. The existing and proposed should be exactly the same because from my understanding they're not doing anything. Okay, but so they're not. Okay. And then what would the required category mean? So that is what is in the PID itself. Those are the regulations that are in the PID. For instance, we have one that, and I'll explain this when it comes up, um, the setback is 10 feet. That's a requirement. The commission can waive up to 50%, meaning you can only waive up to five feet their existing building. So we would consider that to be non-conforming structure. Um, if they're doing anything new, any new project plan reviews um, would have to be set back 10 feet unless you were to grant the waiver, but then it would be a hearing and an amendment to the district plan. So um, as far as I, my knowledge, I don't think SU is doing anything in these specific spots. They are only wishing to change the uh, zoning and to create that sub-district for each but I will go back and to my seat and check these <laughs> charts uh, and look them up. on page one of uh, Z2813. Okay. Where the chart is that I'm looking at. All right. Yeah. 
So with that, uh, we'll ask the applicant to come forward. And just a reminder, this is going to get monotonous for you, I'm sure, um, but because you have a variety of presentations to make, but each time for each new application, if you would repeat your name, sure. who you are, we actually can see who you are, and we know you haven't changed, <laughs> but the reason for that is, of course, this is being recorded, and later we won't have the visual to go with it, so it would be helpful to know who's speaking. So if you, and if you forget, I'll try to remember, and if I forget, someone else will jump in and remind us. Thank you so much, Chairperson Kulik and members of the Planning Commission. I'm Jennifer Bybee, Assistant Director for Campus Planning for Syracuse University. The office address is 1320 Jamesville Ave in Syracuse. Um, one proposal I have, if I might, if this will work, um, is so understood there are many items and they're grouped accordingly. There are overall themes for this in, in terms of overall what we're doing and um, sort of how we approach this. So if I might take a few moments and make general comments, I think it would help um, explain some of the background of why we're here. And also, I think then I won't have to repeat this general framework type of um, why we're here for each uh, of the cases. So it makes so a lot of sense for you. to provide that context okay. up front. Great. Um, so, um, if I may, in terms of background, we began to look at how all our properties are zoned as part of the city's initiative for rezone Syracuse. And in doing so, it it forced us to realize, um, taking a hard look at things, that it made a lot of sense in instances that some of these zoning districts that our lands were in, it would really make a lot more sense for them to be in the planned institutional district zoning um, in terms of providing predictability and um, efficiency. So that's how this came about and why we chose these particular properties. There are SU lands that will remain in other zoning districts, and we're not proposing to put everything we own into plan institutional district. Um, so um, some important uh, disclaimers, if you will. There are no actual development projects associated with the rezonings and the adoptions opposed for district plans for what we're doing tonight. Um, as I said, it just seemed to us that we should have these lands under the umbrella of PID zoning district. And in doing our research to see if this was appropriate and working with the city staff, who've been wonderful and extremely helpful in this process, it was clear that the uses that exist now all comply with what's allowed by plan institutional district zoning. Um, in other words, what we're doing is in terms of the district plan, we're just taking exactly what's there now and saying this is the district plan. Not, not proposing any projects, nothing to change, just a snapshot essentially it's a paper change of changing the zoning district. Um, now that said, there are some instances where we have some, as was alluded to already, some setback issues, some lot coverage that what's built um, wouldn't be exactly what PID would call for. For instance, with the steam station, and I'll get into these details where that's an instance. And so we'll, I'll address those particular issues. Um, that's really the only way in which there's anything sort of, of particular um, import, I would say, was coming to some of these existing conditions. Um, again, overall, for all the applications uh, regarding seeker, we recognize that the Planning Commission must make a seeker determination, and we did submit uh, seeker d documentation um, in connection with the rezoning applications, and we believe that um, at tonight or another point uh, that negative declarations are likely warranted. Um, and our understanding of next steps would be that, that first of all, this is obviously the concurrent approval of the rezonings and the establishment of district plans that we're seeking. Um, that the county plan will, planning board will review these next. Then we'll be back to your commission for approval. And then we anticipate going to uh, city common council for the final consideration. So all of that said, <laughs> uh, first subdistrict uh, would be subdistrict 10. You can get the mic and bring it with you. Sure. Subdistrict 10, uh, located south of Burt Street and east of Almond Street, north of Van Buren Street, 
And what I'll do is just provide the very um, most salient points of the application itself for the rezoning. So the existing zoning districts are RB and BA. The acreage itself is about 3.64 acres. And the existing uses are student housing, which include a dining hall and a parking garage. And no dimensional waivers are sought. And I'm stopping there because I believe uh, Subdistrict 11 will be handled as a different two items. So, Heather, this is where I noticed in the <clears throat> chart, structural coverage is 19%, but it's proposed to go to 50. Developed open space is 73%. It's proposed to decrease to t uh, down to 20%. The FAR switch changes, and then th the rest is... I guess more or less the same so yes so I think required may be the wrong word that we use in the chart those are the those are the regulations for PID in general so okay. from my understanding talking to council um, SU's council that the existing structural coverage is 19% but in their district plan you can they can set what they want it to be so that's why these PIDs are so unique and so they want to build up to 50% of the land and so they're proposing that in their district plan so for PID sub district 10 it is going to say the parameter set forth will say that they want to be able to build up to 50% so the next thing that they do might be they might go up to 22% or 23%, and then they can only go up to 50. So that's what they're requesting, and required is really the wrong word. It's allowable up to 50%. So in this instance, they're asking for the maximum structural coverage that they can have in this district. The maximum allowable under the overall PID right. requirements. Okay, so in this particular case, in this location, that's not an issue for me, but elsewhere I do have a concern about that. Okay. So I just wanted to make sure that, again, we have certain existing conditions, but your proposed plan would, to me, Ebbett Tower disappeared tomorrow, you would be allowed to build up to 50% lot structural coverage. So that is a, a change from the current existing conditions, but it does conform with the overall allowances under PID. Please come up. Just, I think one thing yeah, it's it. important to emphasize your, your, your name. comments, please. Oh, Greg Fauché, Whiteman, Osterman, and Hanna with SU. That authorization of the district plan is not going to authorize SU to construct anything. I want to emphasize that. That we wouldn't be allowed to build anything more without coming back to this board and, if needed, to Common Council. Uh, for project plan review, any waivers that may be required. Oh, I understand. I understand that. But it sets the framework, though, to allow the conditions to change. Yes. So that's what I'm getting at. So if for some reason in this location, 50% structural coverage was not consistent with larger planning efforts by the city, like the city comprehensive plan, then that would be my concern. We would be adjusting the threshold, granted within the overall PID allowances, but it still nonetheless is a change. So I just want to make sure that we all see that and know that. And as I said, I think it actually becomes more of an issue for me somewhere else, but I just wanted to check on that. So thank everyone who commented. Other questions regarding subdistrict 10? So, <clears throat> In terms of process here, I'm thinking we pause at each one and um, ask the applicant to step aside for a moment and we'll ask for comments for and against before we move on to the next pair of applications that are uh, for sure. next 11 or, um, yeah, 11 comes mm -hmm. next. So are there individuals who wish to speak in favor of this application. If so, please come to the podium, provide your name and comments. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to the application, please come forward, provide your name and comments. Yes, please.
Nina Moore. I can hardly believe I'm standing here because I just came to listen. <laughs> so um, I, I think I'm stuck and I, I don't, I'm not speaking in favor uh, or against. I think I'm just confused. Uh, what's the impetus if there aren't plans to build? That's what I, I don't quite get. So yeah, please. So again, we began looking at all of our owned properties in um, evaluating responses to what Rezone Syracuse is doing. And essentially, this is a planning exercise. We looked at the zoning districts that our lands were in, um, and it seemed to make a lot of good planning and design sense to be in the plan institutional district zoning. And uh, beyond that, there aren't projects associated with any of these right now. It's basically planning for the future and thinking this is makes sense we should do this Jennifer you might want to again for context sure. in case the speaker is not familiar with rezone Syracuse maybe a quick synopsis sure. of why that has triggered your analysis of the university's properties and yes. then these actions sorry for the colloquy because I know this isn't your protocol but I thought I heard something about the city sort of being the impetus and the city is doing some sort of review. Well, the, the city initiated the rezone Syracuse process, which is, of course, our city staff experts can speak to this um, more comprehensively. Um, but it is a city initiated um, effort to look at zoning districts citywide. And there have been a number of drafts. It's all on the city website. And so as a landowner, like many other landowners in the city, we looked at how our properties are zoned and we're evaluating what the city is proposing and um, have worked with city staff to say, you know, we really think that since so much of our um, lands are already in plan institutional district zoning like the hospitals, this just makes sense. And we might not have actually necessarily come to that conclusion if we hadn't been looking at everything because of the city initiated rezone Syracuse initiative. Sure. Thank you. Um, just to just to add to that, um, rezone Syracuse very briefly is an overhaul of the zoning ordinance. Our zoning laws are um, pretty old and haven't been um, overhauled in a long time. Uh, Buffalo recently did the same thing in Albany, so it's a project to essentially bring us in into the current era of zoning. Um, so just uh, there. The uh, there is a draft of the ordinance that is online if you're interested. Okay, great. Thanks for your indulgence. I appreciate it. Thanks for the question. And let me renew the uh, invitation. If there's anyone here who wishes to speak in favor or against the pair of applications we just heard, please come forward, provide your name and address, and your comments. Uh, Gloria Sage, twelve seventeen Jamesville Avenue. Um, this is just for informational purposes. Um, the plan, a lot of the um, parcels of land that are going to be put into or proposed to be put into a planned in institutional district, some of them say B, residential A, business, whatever. Are there, I mean, I was told that they don't plan to change these, but what can be done are there various um, subdivisions of a planned institutional district? Because otherwise, our, uh, zoning is, helps one keep developments that are not suitable out. And if you have one whole planned institutional district and it, the land was originally zoned as A for residentials, what is to prevent them from putting up a big dormitory? That's the question. I'm going to defer to staff on this because I know there are um, multiple subunits of the P overall PID and there are different um, flavor to each of those sub-districts. Could you give an overview, Heather, kind of a high level maybe? Sure. So plan institutional <clears throat> districts allow a lot of different uses, i.e. institutional, hospital, not just school, not just colleges and universities. Um, the wording in here is a, uh, a little bit um, 
older, but I'll just say, so institutional uses are permitted. Universities, college, public and private elementary, junior high, high schools, hospitals, clinics, care homes, sanitariums, religious institutions, civic uses, fraternities and sororities, daycare centers, businesses, and commercial schools. Those are the primary principal uses that are allowed in a PID. Accessory uses are residential, so dormitory. So they would be allowed in um, a PID as well. Um, retail and or service uh, permitted to the extent that the uses are found by the Planning Commission to be appropriate for the districts. So those would have to come before the Planning Commission. Um, as an example, for instance, South Campus now is residential class B. That allows for multifamily. So you could build a big apartment building there now, even if SU didn't own it and didn't occupy it. Um, also in residential class B, universities and colleges are allowed. So that's how they got to be there in the first place. The, the, the uniqueness about PIDs is that they create a district plan. So it's a, it's a comprehensive plan moving forward to um, control development. So all of these parameters that we were just talking about, the 50%, the 12 point, you know, 5% open space, those are things that the PID helps control. Now, if they ask for more than is allowed within these regulations, the commission gets to consider whether or not to waive that. They can only waive up to 50% of um, one of those parameters. So if you're allowed 50% uh, open, or if you need if you need 50% open space, and they can only ask for um, 75% total with a waiver because they can only waive 50% of the 50%, yeah. which is 25. So um, there are certain controlled aspects of a PID rather than um, residential class B, which is some things are just allowed allowed by right. So. Um, the commission would have a chance to review anything that that as you did in the future with respect to physical construction Okay, thanks that's helpful uh, Let me once again ask if there are um, it seems like we're getting more questions about process and um, um, And procedure than for or against but I will offer the opportunity again before we move on to the next pair of hearings, if there's anyone who wishes to speak for or against the two applications we've just been discussing, please come to the podium, provide your name and address, and your comments either way. And Gloria, I have the regulations right here. I, if you want to look at them while you're sitting here, you can see what's allowed and, and everything that goes into a PID because they're still going to be presenting. So if you want to see that. <laughs> Okay, I don't see any other individuals who wish to speak. Um, so while Heather is sharing those nice, stimulating regulations with the public, uh, we will close these two hearings and we'll move to the next pair of hearings, which I think pertains to district, sub district 11. Yes. Okay, so the next two companion pieces are Z2808. This is a change of zone from residential class B and business class A to planned institutional district. This is for 700 and 710 to 722 University Avenue. Syracuse University is the petitioner. And the companion district plan is Z2814. This is a planned institutional district district plan to establish subdistrict 11 to the SUPID. 700 and 710 to 722 University Avenue is the address and Syracuse University is the owner and petitioner and this is uh, li they lie within a residential class B and business class A zoning district. Thank you. Hello. I'm Jennifer Bybee, Assistant Director for Campus Planning with Syracuse University again, <laughs> 1320 Jamesville Ave and um, let me take the microphone outlined the um, major aspects of um, the addresses etc for subdistrict 11 uh, this is west of University Avenue and north of Marshall Street this would be the um, what's known as the Marshall Square Mall property University College and a uh, parking lot existing sub uh, zoning district excuse me is RB it's approximately 1.41 acres 
the uses right now are retail, academic, university fitness, and surface parking. And um, this is an instance uh, where our existing structural coverage by our calculations is 54%. Uh, so we'd be requesting that that be the limit for this subdistrict then, um, reflecting what exists, and uh, develop open spaces 18.5%. Uh, again, we'd be requesting that be the um, minimum amount allowed here because it's what exists. And a note with regard to the setbacks, we have some zero-foot setbacks right now. Um, our understanding of existing zoning that's on the property right now is that the Planning Commission can determine setbacks that are appropriate in RB. And um, accordingly, we were requesting those in this instance because of the uh, to reflect what's on the ground right now. And that concludes my portion of the presentation for Subdistrict 11. Great, thank you. Questions from the commission members? Again, to staff, so <clears throat> three of these categories are inconsistent with the overall parameters of the PID, so we'd have to grant a waiver if we were going to approve their request. <clears throat> Structural coverage is greater than the max allowed Develop open space is less than, and the uh, off-street parking is less than. So I was just talking to my lawyer, <laughs> and um, if she agrees with me that this is my first take on this would be that they could be accepted as nonconformities, because if you think about elsewhere where the zoning has changed, and say it changed from a multifamily district with a six dwelling unit apartment house to residential A1, we wouldn't make them tear down the apartment house and build a single family house. It would just be a nonconformity. But I'm going to let my lawyer speak further on that. Well, but you're speaking about the existing conditions being identified as nonconforming, but the proposed is if, again, Marshall Square Mall got blown up and they wanted to build something new 30 years from now, it could now have 54% coverage because we would have granted a waiver, so right? Maybe it shouldn't be proposed. It should just be this is what it is, and we accept that as a nonconformity. But if it does get torn down, then it can't be any more than 50%. Yeah. That's what you're saying. I think that, that my attorney would. If it's interpreted as a non-conforming use and a structure were significantly destroyed, then you would have to follow the rules of um, how it's currently zoned. As opposed to what's being requested, which is to say that the, the current conditions become allowable because we would grant them a waiver. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Questions. I think I'm done. <laughs> questions. No, I'm, I'm, those are good questions, and you know we haven't really had this. Before. We don't have a great volume of these kinds of uh, applications, for sure. Um, well, for instance, when S, uh, when they proposed the subdistrict number nine, it was vacant land, and then they built upon it. So there was they set the parameters, but they didn't go above and beyond what was in the rules. So, so, so just to follow this through, then let's say that. <clears throat> We approve the zone change in this case, and we were to approve the plan, the development requirements. We would approve the district plan as long as the plan requirements were consistent with the PID requirements. Again, the building goes away, and they were to come in and say, well, we actually want to build that old footprint again. At that point, could the commission grant them a waiver so they could build 54% lot coverage and not 50? Because I'm sure that's their concern. May I interject? Because our understanding is there are certain dimensional waivers that the Planning Commission can grant up to 50% of. So for instance, if you have 50% maximum lot coverage allowable, then the Planning right. Commission can, if they choose to, say you can actually have up to 75%. Right. That's why we thought it was simplest to actually make the limit be what's on the ground because it's within those waiver limits of the Planning Commission. Again, that's just how we were approaching so it. Just front and it's codifying what's already there. Yeah, you're, you're just front loading it. Exactly. I think it would be up to the Commission to discuss that. Okay. 
Thanks. Okay, thank you very much. Are there individuals who wish to speak in favor of this, either one of these, <coughs> this pair of applications? If so, please come to the podium. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to this pair of applications, please come to the podium, provide your name and comments. Uh, we don't have any additional speakers for this pair. We'll close these hearings and move to the next. Oh. Are we closing them? No, we are closing them. Yeah. Sorry. Um, we have to wait for the county planning board. So you can't render a decision. Yeah, so. Um, you can't act. However, if the county planning board comes back with a disapproval, then you'd have to reopen it, and it'd have to be a majority plus one to override. So, um, I will leave it up to you and council. So, do you have a recommendation? For I would recommend that, given the uh, procedural requirements, if uh, if you would have to reopen, that it would be simpler to keep it open today. Okay. We'll maintain these two open, and I believe I closed the previous pair for District 10. So let's undo that. If there is a motion to reopen those two, discussion, all in favor, please say aye. 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 As opposed, say nay. Uh, that is reopened. So we'll do that process with all of these this evening on, on this particular topic. So now our third um, zone change and district plan. Just let me double check. There might be one that doesn't need county planning board review, um, so I'll double check on that one, okay. and we'll let you know. That is, yes, please do. Okay. Um, the next two companion pieces, uh, Z2809. This is a change of zone from residential class B to plan institutional district. This is at 504, 506, 510, 514. 600, 602, 602 and a half, 604 and 606 University Avenue, and 909 and 911 Harrison Street. And Syracuse University is the petitioner. Um, the companion piece is Z2815. This is a planned institutional district, district plan, and this is to establish subdistrict um, 12 to the SUPID. 504, 506, 510, 514, 600, 602, 602 and a half, 604 and 606 University Avenue, and 909 and 911 Harrison Street. As Syracuse University is the petitioner and owner, and these properties lie within a residential class B zoning district. Good evening, Jennifer Bybee with Syracuse University, 1320 Jamesville Avenue, Syracuse. Uh, so district proposed 12 uh, would be west of University Avenue, and um, these are existing surface parking lots. Um, that That is the only use, um, and we're also north of Harrison Street, if that helps to orient everyone. Um, actually, on both sides of Harrison Street. Um, existing zoning district is residential B, proposing for plan institutional district zoning. No uh, dimensional waivers requested. Questions for this pair? Okay, thank you very much. Are there individuals who would like to speak in favor of either of these two uh, applications? If so, please come to the podium with your comments. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to either one of these, please come forward with your comments. So we don't have any speakers <clears throat> for this pair. We'll hold these two open <clears throat> and move to our next pair. Okay, the next two public hearing companion pieces is Z2810. This is a change of zone from industrial class A to plan institutional district. This is 420 and 500 East Taylor Street and 1202 to 1204 McBride Street. Uh, Syracuse University is the petitioner and the companion piece is Z2816. This plan institutional district district plan and this is to establish the steam plant subdistrict to the SUPID. 
420 and 500 East Taylor Street and 1202 to 1204 McBride Street. Syracuse University is the petitioner and owner and the property lies within an industrial class A zoning district. Jennifer Bybee with Campus Planning, Design and Construction at Syracuse University, 1320 Jamesville Ave. As Heather, um, excuse me, Ms. Lamandola indicated, uh, it's existing steam station for the university, proposed steam station plan institutional district south of East Taylor Street and west of Almond Street. It's approximately 3.93 acres in the industrial A zoning district right now. This is the university's steam generation plants, the chilled water plant, and connecting pipelines. Um, in terms of dimensional waivers, we have some existing zero foot setbacks along East Taylor Street and McBride and request that that be the requirement um, reflecting what already exists in terms of the built structures and their existing setbacks. Thank you. So with that one, I just want to clarify, you cannot waive that because you can only waive up to 50%. So you can only waive up to five feet. So that one would have to be a nonconformity. So again, the building would be nonconforming. Right. But if you it ever could, went away, which it you probably could, wouldn't. Uh, you could approve a waiver that further any further buildings be only five feet from the property line. Right. And we would do that when they would come in for a project. Well, they would have to amend their district plan. So I think you should discuss that and what your wishes are because you, you can't get the zero setback um, ever. <laughs> For any new construction. <clears throat> Greg Fauché, White Manasseh, Manhattan. I, th I think the answer to this would be that since the PID is a zone change, that this board could recommend to the Common Council that they actually adopt the zero foot setback as part of their action on the PID so that it recognizes the existing condition. It today it, it is allowed as, as zero setback because it's industrial A. There are, there are no setback requirements. And um, the side and rear yard setbacks can be set at zero. While there, you know, we may differ on what the zoning law says, um, I believe a waiver of the 50% can be done by the Planning Commission. The Common Council can do whatever it wants within the scope of its discretion to enact zoning. So we would, I think we would request that um, this board consider recommending to the council that the setback be zero um, on the front street because that's where the building is today. So and if, to if they want to impose a, a, a further requirement of if you ever put a different use on there, it has to meet the, the, set, the 10 foot or the five foot or whatever, I can't speak for my client. My guess is we could live with, with something like that. So if the commission were to consider anything like that, they would have, it would have to be a text amendment. It's, and it's a text amendment to the overall PID language, I'm not saying, to what we're doing today. Right. That's what that, it would have to be a text amendment to the zoning ordinance to uh, petition that there would be zero setback in the zoning ordinance. For the entire PID right. classification. That's right. Well, that would require substantial more thinking about tonight. Can I speak again? <laughs> even, even if it is a text amendment, I, I believe the, certainly the law would allow that that text amendment apply only here and not be PID wide. A little confused by that actually sorry or, um, the law would have to change because the law in the book says we are changing. 10 but the common council doesn't have the authority to just change it for this one proposal the rules are the it would be like it would be like no one has the authority to waive a front yard in residential class B which now 
we would go to the Board of Zoning Appeals, they could do that. Um, that might be an option, now that I think about it. Yeah. That, to go to the Board of Zoning Appeals. I was, that's actually exactly what I was thinking, is that if they needed a further waiver, that, yeah. that would be um, the only thing I can think of. Otherwise, it would just continue as a nonconformity as any, um, any change of an ordinance would. I just want to emphasize, we are not saying that you can't establish the waiver for five feet or call it non-conforming. I'm suggesting that I believe it would be within your authority and, and from our perspective it would make far more sense if the Common Council was to establish it at, at zero. And I believe legally they can do that, but it's up, it's up to this board, it's up to the Common Council based on information you receive believe that the Common Council would have the authority to waive the yard setbacks and all of that falls within Planning Commission or um, UZA and sort of that uh, so I don't think that the Council would have that authority unless they were amending text as was mentioned doing a text amendment as was mentioned earlier Yes. I just want to clarify yeah, staff. I think we've gone around on something. I just want to clarify something. Okay. Please. Thanks. Okay. For both of you, for staff, just to clarify, if we were to treat this as a normal situation, to label it as a nonconformity, they still have the option to go to the board, the zoning board. If they would like to expand an existing nonconforming use, which this would be, then uh, that. Yes, and yes. Right. Again, you know what happens when I start my deliberative process. <laughs> so for their sake, I, our, our normal path would be non-conforming use. Their path could be to go to the zoning board and still get, have a remedy for this situation alone. Well, it wouldn't be a non-conforming use. It would be a non-conforming structure. structure. So it's, okay. it's in an area that cannot be built upon without waiver by this board for the required yard or IE setback. This board only has the authority to waive so much. So if they want to go above and beyond that, the other relief valve or form of relief would have to be the Board of Zoning Appeals because the Common Council doesn't have authority to waive yards. But to Walter's point, there is a vehicle for achieving relief. There, yes, For gaining there is, relief. Yes, which we just okay. thought of when we were talking. Is that where yeah, we were going? We're yes. Okay. So. If you, if you wanted to ask for the five feet, this board can do that through this district plan, through a waiver, this evening. But to get to zero, it would have to go to the Board of Zoning Appeals to right. seek that other piece of relief. Or you can just accept this building as a non-conforming structure and anything, and you can decide later. Uh, in the future if you're ready to build something or demolish this or 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 whatever but procedurally I think um, that's the that would be the best course of action so there are options because in a sense if any of these buildings I don't like to say blow up any of these buildings <laughs> outlive their usefulness right. just so that I'm not the one on YouTube saying anything about <laughs> demolition if there's a point where these buildings outlive their usefulness and they can be replaced with a better system better building they would then come back with a new project at which, like point, at which point, at which point the the setback issue could be dealt with and relief could indeed be provided. Yes. Okay. But only up to five feet. By us. By you. Right. The new better buildings won't need that much. They'll they'll be able to go the setback. <laughs> okay. There is a path. There's a path. We were on questions from the commission members. Additional questions? All set, thanks. Good ones. Okay, thank you. Are there individuals who would like to speak in favor of either one of these two applications? If so, please come to the podium. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to either of these two applications, please come forward. 
And just please provide your name, address, and your comments. I just have a couple questions. Just your name and address and whatever the questions are, and after the rest of the public who wishes to, may wish to comment, has gone through that, we'll ask the applicant to return. My name is John Boylan. I live uh, 201 Arnold Ave, Syracuse, New York. And I just have a couple of brief questions, just a curiosity. As far as the steam plant is concerned, is the Syracuse University uh, planning to maintain ownership? And if not, does this PID change help them with the sale of it? Or and that question in that direction, I guess. I can answer that really quickly. And in, in fact, if it's not an institution and owned by the institution that controls the uses on within that zoning district, it can't be a PID. So if it becomes a PID, then they can't sell it? No, it couldn't be a PID. If a private, in, if you own this land, you can't ask for a planned institution no, after the district fact. zone change. After the fact, Heather, if it becomes yeah. a PID. Right, so <laughs> if, if they wanted to sell it, then it would have to not, it can't be a PID. It ha we'd have to change the zoning back to something different. Unless it's another institution uh, or another, uh, like a hospital or another um, college or university. Okay, uh, the other question would be, what effect, uh, if any, would this have on the Interstate 81 project? because that is so close. I, I would assume the zoning change is not going to affect that project. That, If anything, that, that project doesn't really relate to the zoning right now. It's after a decision is made, the community might want to think about how things are zoned in that particular location. It happens, correct? It's going to happen True. sooner or later, but... Well, our grandchildren perhaps will be here yeah. for that. <laughs> yes. I was just curious. Thank you. Other individuals who may wish to speak in opposition to the applications? Come forward, please. I don't think we have any speakers on this particular pair, so we will hold this hearing open, this pair, and move to our next set. Okay, the next two companion pieces, Z2811. This is a change of zone from residential A1 to and residential class B to plan institutional district. This is known in assessment as 1348, 1386, 1500, 1700, 1702, 1800, 1800 rear, and 2000 rear East Colvin Street, 100 Edith Street, 617 to 625, 701, and 801 Thurber Street, and 311 Janesville Avenue. Syracuse University is the petitioner. The companion piece is the district plan, which is Z2817. This is a planned institutional district, district plan, to establish South Campus Subdistrict to the SUPID. And again, these addresses known in assessment are 1348, 1386, 1500, 1700, 1702, 1800, 1800 rear, and 2000 rear East Colvin Street, 100 Edith Street, 617 to 625, 701 and 801 Thurber Street, and 1311 Janesville Avenue. Syracuse University is the owner and petitioner, and these are in a residential class A1 and a residential class B zoning district. Thank you. Once again. Hello again, Jennifer Bybee with the Syracuse University Campus Planning Office. 1320 Jamesville Avenue in Syracuse. And this is the proposed South Campus Plan Institutional District. I'll show you the district plan map. The um, existing uses here are student housing, academic, sports uh, slash recreational, retail, and university office. It's approximately 197 acres currently and there are no dimensional waivers requested. Uh, this is the area south of East Colvin Street and east of Rowe Avenue and east of Jamesville Avenue.
Thank you. Questions? So, so I have a question related to the um, RA1 parcels and the new allowances would permit 50% structural coverage. How does that relate to what's allowed in RA1 right now? Well, colleges and universities are not allowed in RA1, so... But in terms of structural coverage, Oh, if so there was a single-family house? See, those are all individual lots. There's, like, 50 lots there. Um, that's why, if you heard me say, known in assessment as 100 Edith Street, mm -hmm. there are many, many lots there that were never resubdivided. So, um, an individual lot, say 40 by 100, it's 4,000 square feet, you can have 30% lot coverage of structures on that lot and 30% um, parking surface coverage. So 20% of the lot has to be open. 60% combined. <coughs> if there was a single family house. Right, so I'm thinking about density. Right. And, and mostly just for those RA1 parcels because obviously right now they serve as a buffer for the larger RB right. chunk. Yeah, so 40%. Okay. Thank you. Did I say 40? I meant 30. Yeah, it, it, it was 30. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I'm good. Thank you. Are there individuals who would like to speak in favor of either of these two applications? If so, please come forward. Uh, not in favor, but I have some questions. Okay, we'll put you in the middle category. Okay. I thought I was in the middle. Oh, well, okay. you can speak. You can, no one. And I will ask those who wish to speak in opposition, but why don't you uh, offer your comments after you give us your name and address. Hi, I'm Barbara Genton. I live at 301 Rowe Avenue. I'm here along with my neighbors on Rowe Avenue. Rowe Avenue um, <clears throat> borders South Campus. Okay, We are a residential community that is uh, bordered by South Campus, and there's a parcel of land that is on Colvin and Thurber area that is uh, currently vacant. So the uh, redistricting that's going on or the zoning, let me see if I get this straight. This is because of the initiative that's going on right now in the city of Syracuse. Is that the intent of uh, the university? That was the impetus for us impetus. to get all of these. My next question is um, uh, concerning this vacant parcel of land, if anything, was to be initiated by Syracuse or proposed by Syracuse other than oh, to, to uh, change this parcel of land, would Syracuse University have to come back to the Planning Commission? Absolutely. Well, I hope we never see each other again. <laughs> but just let I me, really do. I need to clarify that. They, they would have to come back, but it might not necessarily be a public hearing and you might not know about it because project plan reviews are something that are already set forth with all these parameters. So to one of the commissioner's point, um, if the 50% is set, then they could, they could build on that. Um, and if they say they want to build in the district plan a, a dorm or a soccer field or whatever it is it might not be a public hearing so I'm not happy with that um, I'm sure that's the law but I uh, probably along with my neighbors I, I, I just would not be happy not knowing what was the intent or what was going to happen on that uh, piece of property May I interject, Lord? Our industry 
understanding is that it, could, could speak oh, sure. my neighbor. Sure, sorry about that. Uh, sure. So our understanding has always been that it's actually the planning commission itself that determines if the university has a project plan review application, if it's actually a public hearing item or not. It wouldn't be something the university decides. It's actually the planning commission that would determine if they would hold a public hearing or not. Thank you so very much. Thank you. And once again, I hope we never meet again. I mean, over this issue. Coffee, maybe. Okay. Are there individuals who would like to speak uh, in opposition to this application? So please come forward. <clears throat> While Gloria is coming to the podium, so Heather, I just want to, the RA1 areas are currently platted as individual traditional residential lots. So if the university was going to develop that, if they were looking at just one lot, I can't imagine they would be looking at just one of those narrow little lots. But theoretically, on one little lot, they could build something that had 50% structural coverage on that one little lot. If it's changed to be if, if it changes. Yeah. Yeah. If they wanted to take 10 of those lots and build something with 50% lot coverage, would they first have to have a sub resubdivision? They want to build over lot lines, yes. Right. So they, yes. Are you thinking one structure or several structures on the fence? Uh, two different scenarios. The first would be your average 40 by 120 foot lot, and I can't imagine what they would build, but if they did, on that narrow little lot, they could build something with 50% lot coverage. But if they wanted to take 10 of those 40 foot wide lots, they would come first, even though it's a PID, it would be under the, the PID in this subdistrict, would they first have to ask to resubdivide all those little lots into one parcel? And then, even on that parcel, they could have 50% lot coverage. Okay, so our involvement would be both at the resubdivision level first, and then possibly if they cross a threshold, um, we might be looking at a plan and something consistently with the approved plan. And the commission might want to set parameters in the district plan that there be no buildings here or no development, or maybe you don't accept that the whole thing becomes PAD. You know, you can discuss that uh, amongst yourselves. Mm -hmm. um, there are options for everyone, I think. Okay. As far as the new parcel, Would you I, provide I, your, your name and address? Okay, and then your Columbia comments. Stage, 1217 Jamesville Avenue. Um, <clears throat> first of all, this part here is an access for utilities. Oh, this, this section here, it's just an access for, for utilities to get up to, um, actually, um, the office park, which never took off. But um, what, we, what I object to is this area in here that abuts on East Colvin Street and ends on Thurber Street at um, Roe Avenue and Arnold Avenue. Um, this parcel is zoned presently zoned A1, and it, it was stripped at one point. Um, I can think of no institutional uses for property which is A1, none. And this would really affect the neighborhood very, very strongly because there are residential streets that go up here. I don't trust anything that SU would do with this lot. Years ago, they wanted to make it into a parking lot for, dome, for the dome. And uh, we were up in arms. And we won because it was zoned for residential single family houses. The way, where that is, it's just perfect for single family houses. So I don't think that that parcel of land should be included in a planned institutional district, it should remain A1 zoning or whatever the new designation with the rezone plan is. Um, but anyway, that's what I feel. And, uh, you know, a parking lot, I don't know that that's A1. What can a, an institution do to make that compatible with what it is now and with the neighborhood? Thank you. 
Are there other individuals who wish to speak in opposition to this pair of applications? My name is John Boylan. I live at 201 Arnold Ave, which is right here across the street from this beautiful lot that's there at the moment that I strongly oppose to uh, any changes in that lot. I, don't, I definitely would not want to see roads. I can see that there are roads here that don't exist currently. I don't know if you can see that, but... Um, Arnold does not extend across this lot to Colvin uh, or uh, Vincent uh, Paper Street, and nor does uh, Row Ave. Those roads don't exist. <coughs> Excuse me, they don't exist, and I would not want to see them exist in the future uh, for traffic issues, for residential, for children in the area. Um, and I wake up every day, look out my bedroom window, and I see that nice lot, and I can see Manly Field House, and I'd love it to stay that way. Okay, thank you. Other individuals who wish to speak in opposition? My name is Barbara Fanning Dowdell and I live at 224 Row Avenue. And I totally agree with what Gloria was saying, that that area between Thurber and Comstock should not be developed. It should stay residential. And um, because there are, it is a young neighborhood with lots of children and families, and we value that area. Thank you. Jerry, did you wish to speak as well? Please do. Um, I guess I, I don't wish to speak in op oh sorry my name is Devin Bartholomew I live at 112 TJ Avenue in Syracuse New York and um, I don't necessarily wish to speak in opposition I wish to I guess ask for some clarity um, and, and maybe a suggestion um, it, it seems that this I, I'm new to the neighborhood lived there about four years but uh, it, it seems that this is definitely a, a beloved community and a border um, these are border properties that uh, our community has a lot of concern and a lot of questions about. So um, upon looking at the PID uh, uh, requirements, or not necessarily requirements, but it looks like there could be additional supportive or explanatory information given for these properties. I, I hear that nothing necessarily has been planned at this time, but perhaps the commission could ask um, in order to approve this for what the intention and plans would be for this. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily permissible, but just thought I would ask in order for our community to get better clarity around the purpose of it. And so my, my property butts up to the 1311 Jamesville uh, Ave, as well as a landlocked piece of property of woods that I own that it goes right between. So I'm kind of just kind of curious that I, sh I share uh, values on, on both sides of that. So. Thank you. Other individuals who wish to speak in opposition? Okay, so then I think we would return to the applicant. I've heard some comments made and uh, both in the form of questions as well as comments and give you the opportunity to address those comments that have been made already. We appreciate the input and the concerns expressed very much. And we know the public hearing, from what we understand, is remaining open. And the Planning Commission, we understand, won't make a determination tonight. So um, as the owner's representative, I would um, plan to take this feedback back to others at the university. And um, we will obviously discuss it um, with the import with which it deserves. And we appreciate the input. Um, Jennifer, I just want to make sure that and we've been mostly focusing on the RA1 at the northwest corner, but there's a smaller piece at the end of, I think it's Cumberland and Westmoreland. Mm -hmm. um, I would have the same concerns there as okay. well. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. 
As indicated before, uh, these two remain open. We have uh, one more pair, I believe. I'm just going to stay here. Uh, <laughs> the next two are uh, companion pieces Z2812. This is a change of zone from residential class B and commercial class B to planned institutional districts, 201 Ainsley Drive and 1320 and 1330 Jamesville Avenue. Syracuse University is again the petitioner. The companion piece is Z2818. This is a planned institutional district, district plan. And this is to establish the Ainsley subdistrict to the SUPID, 201 Ainsley Drive and 320 and 313 Jamesville Avenue are the addresses. And again, SU is the petitioner and the owner. And this is a residential class B and commercial class B zoning district. Thank you, we're on the last one here. Jennifer Bybee, 1320 Jamesville Avenue, Syracuse with campus planning, design and construction. Ainsley campus. This is approximately 20 acres. The existing zoning districts are residential B and, and commercial business. This is where the university campus planning office is, also the university physical plant, as well as university commissary and associated uh, accessory uses. We are not proposing any dimensional waivers here. Actually, in fact, I will point out um, that what we did was in proposing setbacks, we took the existing setback of the physical plant building to the property line, which is 37 feet, um, which is more than might typically be allowed. And we actually proposed that all around, well, actually, I'm sorry, to the west and to the north and to the east um, in recognition of the residential area surrounding. Um, so I thought I would mention that I proposed some of the discussions we just had closer to the main streets of James Little Ave and to Ainsley. We proposed the typical PID setback of 10 feet. Okay, uh, questions on this last pair. Are there individuals who wish to speak in favor of either one of these two applications? Just uh, summarized by the applicant. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to either pair? To either one of the pair? Gloria Sage, 1217 Jamesville Avenue, very close to this area. Um, this area, um, I'll give you a little bit of history. Um, at the corner of Ainsley Drive. If you take the microphone so folks can hear you. Uh, at the corner of Ainsley Drive and Jamesville Avenue, that's the C&D landfill that's been closed. When the university had the street closing agreements, that's where the streets were put, right in here. Killed all the trees. Now it's uh, Laubach Literacy who owned the land uh, at the time, said they weren't going to develop it. So um, anyway, uh, the other thing that I might ask is what can be put in a planned institutional district? This area here is a junkyard. I don't know that. You know, granted, it's pretty shielded, but I don't know whether you need a special permit for a junkyard. Uh, anyway. Um, the area there, um, I think in the framework, there was some discussion that that may be some sort of a park and ride sort of area. And if that is, I, I'm not sure I see the area for parking, maybe at that corner, which I said was a C&D landfill. But if that's the case, one might have lots of traffic, more traffic, going down Jamesville and Comstock, unimproved streets, no sidewalks, it's dangerous. So that's my comment on that uh, area. And um, you know, if anything is permitted, there should be enough setback for sidewalks, which 
unfortunately, the Planning Commission has not done in plenty of places like East Colvin Street, when it was widened, there was no right of way. The sidewalks where they are are uh, not sufficient so that the snow goes over the sidewalks when there's plowing on, on some of them, and a lot of kids walk down there to go to school. So um, uh, that's my comment on that area. Thank you. Other individuals who might want to speak in position, please come forward, sir. I'll just provide your name and address and then your comments. I'm not in, my name is Tony Zugabe and uh, I'm at 122 Clearview Road with, uh, I'm not in favor or against, I just need to know if there is any planning, uh, what they're gonna build there or uh, if there is any planning for that. There are no plans associated with this proposed rezoning. And if there were to be, then the university would come to the city with a project plan approval application and it would be processed from there with the public hearing or without at the Planning Commission's discretion. And if not in accordance with what is there right now, then a amendment proposed to the district plan as well. Other individuals who wish to speak in opposition to the application, please come forward. Okay, I think everyone who wishes to speak one way or the other has had the opportunity to do so. Uh, we will maintain these two uh, hearings open. Heather, had you determined uh, which, if any of these, you thought might not need uh, county board um, review? You thought there might be one of them? or that to be determined later? Yes, so number 10 and 11, so that is Z2708 and Z2814, that is at 700 and 710 to 722 University Avenue. Um, that one does not need County Planning Board review. You said 10 and 11, right? Yeah. 10, okay. And Those that's are the companion pieces. And that's the. No, wait a minute. Just the one sub district. It's district 10? 11. 11. Why is that, though? It's not within 500 feet of a county or state owned property, park, gotcha. road, et cetera. Gotcha. There are certain. Yeah, yeah. Instances. Okay, um, we have another public hearing. Would you please introduce our yes. next one? The last public hearing is 3S. Yes, the last. Uh, just to clarify, though, um, just 10 projects, 10 and 11, are still open. So if you did want to act them on them tonight, you would have to close them. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, so 3S1903, this is a three mile limit subdivision review in the town of Clay, and this is the Allen Road Office Park subdivision. This is it divide one parcel into two new lots at 5229 West Half Road, and Hanford Developers, Inc. are the owners and applicants. The applicant is here, please come forward, uh, provide your name and address and a summary of the application. If there is anyone here who wishes to speak in favor of this application, 3S-19-03, please come forward to do so. If there is anyone here to speak in opposition to the same application, please come forward to do so. We don't have any speakers, nor the applicant. Is uh, the application complete? Yes. Uh, okay. In that instance, uh, we declare the hearing closed as long as we have sufficient information to uh, act upon and the application is complete. Um, I think in the interest of um, efficiency, we might 
then close Z-2808 and its companion piece Z-2814. Since no county review is needed, there's no need to keep these two hearings open. Um, so we will close those two hearings. We are now at liberty to return to the few <laughs> applications, whose hearings we did close this evening to contemplate uh, some possible action on them. So if we, uh, before we move into other portions of our agenda, we return to our very first hearing this evening, the project site review on uh, West Water Street, PR-18-35. We heard the updated uh, project application with modifications made in response to this body and to the Landmark Preservation Board uh, presented this evening. Is there a motion on this application? I would move to approve the negative declaration. Discussion? I just want to thank the staff for making sure our comments got conveyed to the applicant as well as to the Landmark Preservation Board. Uh, further discussion or comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? The project site review is approved. And then we quickly move through item number two, R-19-02 is open, PR-19-03 is also open, as is SP-19-06, all open. That takes us to the special permit SP-19-03 on Ulster Street. We did close this hearing. Is there a motion on this one? I would move to approve the negative declaration and granting the waivers requested second discussion all in favor please say aye aye aye, aye. those opposed say nay any abstentions special permit is approved sp-19-04 is held open uh, sp-19-05 is a special permit on east fayette street uh, this hearing was closed. Is there a motion on this? issue with any of the structure issues? No. So it's and they're using it as it is, as it was. Okay. That's my understanding. Mm -hmm. Right. Property line and so forth is mm -hmm. That's what it's it given. Is. Yeah. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Discussion? In granting the waivers. And granting the waivers. Right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? Special permit is approved. Z-2807 is held open. Z-2813 also held open. We did close Z-2808 and Z-2814 and can act upon those this evening if there's a motion to do so. And, and the first one, Z2808, I would move approval with a negative declaration. Second. Discussion, and I'll pause at this point if the applicant wanted to add a comment during our discussion phase. <laughs> okay. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? So that was Z2808, and we now move now to the district plan, Z28-14. Is there a motion on this? I would move approval with a negative declaration. Second. Discussion? 
All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. Abstentions. The district plan is approved. The next two also held open Z 2809 and Z 2815, as is, or as are, uh, Z 2810, Z 2816, Z 2811, Z 2817, Z 2812, Z 2818. All held open. Uh, we do have the Three Mile Limit case in the town of Clay, 3 S 19 03. Is there a motion on this? I move approval. Second. Is there a second? Discussion? Just wanted to ask staff. Because there was no applicant, the appearance is not unusual that there's no applicant, but does everything else seem to be in order? Yes. Okay. Thank you for checking. <laughs> Further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? Three mile limit is approved. That takes us through our public hearings for this evening. We still have a little more business for tonight. Uh, moving on to minor modifications. We have a special permit. Um, Heather, would you please provide the overview on that? This is a special permit modification to a care home in SP 7114M2. This is to modify the exterior of 947 Pond Street. Uh, you'll see color renderings in your packet. They're taking the concrete and uh, I believe it, it's not paint, it's um, it's, a, it's a cementious coating, I think. Yes, it's, it's a coating that's colored, and so you'll see in here, I believe the colors are blue and blue and green. It didn't come out too well. Uh, And that's the only change. There's uh, no, doesn't necessitate any waivers, and there's no expanded modifications uh, to the floor plan or anywhere else. Okay. Is there a motion on the special permit? Yeah. Move approval. Does this require a negative declaration? Jim. No, I don't, no. I believe it does. No. Then I would move approval. To be <laughs> safe, you should. To be safe, move approval with a negative <laughs> declaration. Discussion? Comments? No, I'm just waiting for when we have design guidelines sometime in the future. <laughs> open to a friendly amendment. Oh, no, no. I mean, we, no, in the future. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Any abstentions? Mm -hmm. Special permit is approved. We have one more mm -hmm. item before we move to authorization. So we have a new business item under um, project plan for renovations. Mm -hmm. Heather, would you? Z2819. This is a project plan review to for renovations to Shine Student Center at 200 to 204 Waverly Avenue. So the applicant at Syracuse University is requesting to perform interior and exterior renovations. It's the exterior renovations that are under your uh, purview as part of the project plan review for uh, new construction. Um, they are replacing the roof. Uh, they have a facade replacement on the southwest side, an entry replacement on the southeast elevation, uh, west facade replacement, and northwest entry renovation. The proposed work will add approximately 200 square feet to the building. Um, it complies with all the sub-district and district rules, and there are no, um, doesn't necessitate any waivers from the commission, and you will see the elevations in your packet. Um, under under exhibit C C <laughs> exhibit C so they are essentially uh, you'll see workspaces that are being bumped out mm -hmm. um, for more windows mm -hmm.
option if there is a motion or if there are questions I think the applicant might be here I would move to approve with a negative declaration second discussion all in favor please say aye aye, aye. suppose say nay any abstentions the project plan is approved before we move to authorizations is there anything else that should come before the Commission tonight no <laughs> What no. was that? He said he'd come up with something. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Uh, it looks as though we have 10 new hearings scheduled for March 11th and also all the continuation hearings from this evening. Anything to add to those two lists? No, just um, with the public hearing that's listed under number two, that might not need a waiver. I just have to check and see if the signage exceeds uh, what's allowable and see what was previously approved so you did see this previously um, it is the I think it's called the rise and shine is it that little carve out inside of the larger deli convenience store yeah, so they're something. adding an addition onto it. it was a pizza I think it was Papa John's or something oh no that's the, Anyways, this is a different on the one corner of right right right, right right yes wrong place they came before you recently they are they want it they're modifying the elevation because they are putting booths inside but they're also adding signage so that might not require a hearing I just wanted to put it on here in case also you do have a lot of resubdivisions and then uh, st. Joe's is coming in with um, a PID a PID its own <laughs> change um, project plan resubdivision and district plan amendment to build a parking garage so those last four are really companion pieces mm -hmm. so it does seem like a lot but it's it's one big project so it still is a lot it still is yes <laughs> but so my my request would be we've done this in the past that particularly if the east genesee street one is going to be a more active discussion if seeker is done by then I would just request that if we were this slate that we don't take any latecomers to add to it because it's going to be a long night anyway right no okay. and we can try not to have any um, minor modifications or, or, or new business on there well those things are really actually easier but yeah. it's just that hopefully no one comes in at the last minute and begs for a, a oh public no hearing. we won't uh, okay. because you would have to authorize them so okay true all right yeah Thank you. Okay. Sorry, Mr. Chair. It's okay. Good understanding to have. Um, so with that understanding of the new 10 projects, the continuing ones from tonight, is there a motion for authorization of all those projects? So moved. Second. Second. Discussion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? So those public hearings are authorized. And is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Discussion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 As opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? We stand adjourned until March 11th. <laughs>